Welcome to the world of Larry Hagman, where luxury meets legend in the vast landscapes of Texas. Once a vibrant emblem of Hollywood glamour and success, Hagman's life was a captivating mix of high-profile roles, extravagant tastes, and profound achievements. His career, marked by iconic performances as J.R. Ewing in Dallas and Major Nelson in I Dream of Jeannie, soared to dazzling heights. Yet, beyond the fame and fortune, Hagman's story is intertwined with a grand estate now left to time's embrace. A sprawling Texas mansion that stands abandoned, a silent monument to a bygone era. In this video, we delve into the fascinating facets of Larry Hagman's lifestyle, career, and the impressive net worth that once fueled it all. You definitely won't want to miss this exploration of the remarkable heights and heartbreaking depths of a true television icon. Larry Hagman, an iconic figure in American television, was a household name whose net worth reached an impressive $30 million by the time of his death in 2012. Hagman's rise to fame is closely intertwined on the television series Dallas, a role that transformed both his career and financial standing. By 1980, Dallas was at the zenith of its popularity, and so was Hagman's financial success. Initially, he earned $15,000 per episode, a significant sum at the time, but not reflective of the character's massive popularity. Recognizing the immense value Hag brought to the show, negotiations to increase his salary began. These discussions were challenging, yet they ultimately resulted in a groundbreaking deal. Hagman's salary surged to $250,000 per episode, a sum that was unprecedented at the time. This substantial increase not only reflected his crucial role in the show's success, but also set a new standard for actor salaries in television. In addition to his television earnings, Hagman made savvy investments in real estate. His strategic property acquisitions added another layer to his financial portfolio, contributing significantly to his overall wealth. These investments allowed him to build and maintain a substantial net worth, ensuring financial security well beyond his television career. Larry Hagman, born on September 21, 1931, in Fort Worth, Texas, emerged from a family steeped in both ambition and artistic talent. His parents, Mary Martin and Benjamin Hagman, set the stage for his remarkable life in different ways. Mary Martin, a Broadway actress and musical comedy star, became a celebrated figure in the entertainment industry. Benjamin Hagman, a district attorney, played a significant role in his community, but the couple's marriage did not last. The separation when Larry was just five years old led to his upbringing primarily under the care of his grandmother, Juanita Martin. Following the divorce, Mary Martin's career took off, and she remarried Richard Halliday, a theatrical producer. With Halliday, she had another child, Heller, making Larry Hagman a half-brother. This new family dynamic and his mother's burgeoning career in theater would influence Hagman's eventual path into acting. Hagman's early education was marked by a series of moves. After his grandmother's passing, he relocated to New York City to live with his mother. He began his formal education at Black Fox Military Academy in California, a rigorous institution that provided him with discipline and structure. Hagman's schooling continued briefly at Woodstock Country School in Vermont, a progressive educational environment that further shaped his character. Until 1946, Hagman returned to Texas, where he completed his high school education at Weatherford High School. His academic journey continued at Bard College in New York, where he pursued drama and dance. Despite his initial enthusiasm, Hagman left Bard College after one year to follow his passion for acting, a decision that would mark the beginning of his professional career. Hagman's entry into the acting world began in earnest in 1950, when he started performing on stage at the Woodstock Theater in New York. This early experience laid the groundwork for his future success. He further honed his craft with the St. John Terrell Musical Circus, traveling through Florida and New Jersey to perform in various tent musicals. 
His early career also included a notable appearance alongside his mother in the play South Pacific in London in 1951. A year later, Hagman's life took a new direction as he was recruited by the United States Air Force. Stationed in London, he used his time in the service to entertain U.S. troops, an experience that enriched his performance skills and broadened his exposure to diverse audiences. After completing his service in 1956, Hagman returned to New York and continued to build his acting career with appearances in off-Broadway plays, including Once Around the Block and Career. Hagman's television career began in 1957 with a small role in an episode of the crime drama Decoy. This early appearance was a stepping stone into the world of television, where he would quickly make a name for himself. Following this debut, Hagman appeared in the short-lived adventure series Harbor Master and made several guest appearances in the popular adventure show Sea Hunt, showcasing his growing talent and adaptability. A breakthrough in 1961, Hagman landed a role in the daytime drama The Edge of Night, where he portrayed Ed Gibson. This role was an important milestone in his career as it provided him with more significant exposure in the industry. He continued to build his reputation with guest spots on the legal drama The Defenders, further demonstrating his range as an actor. The turning point in Hagman's career came in 1965 with the role of Anthony Nelson on the NBC sitcom I Dream of Genie. Playing the role of a charming astronaut who discovers a magical genie, Hagman's performance was a critical success and earned him widespread recognition. The show became immensely popular, running for five successful seasons until 1970. Hagman's portrayal of Nelson, combined with his on-screen chemistry with co-star Barbara Eden, made the show a beloved classic and cemented Hagman's place in television history. After I Dream of Genie, Hagman starred in another NBC comedy, The Good Life, from 1971 to 1972. Despite its promising start, the show was short-lived. In 1973, Hagman took on a new role in the ABC comedy Here We Go Again, which also struggled to find a lasting audience and ended quickly. Despite these setbacks, Hagman continued to showcase his versatility through appearances in various television movies during the 70s, including A Howling in the Woods, Getting Away from It All, No Place to Run, Hurricane, and Intimate Strangers. The late 70s marked a new era in Hagman's career with the role that would define his legacy, J.R. Ewing on the primetime drama Dallas. Premiering in 1978, Dallas was a massive success, and Hagman's portrayal of the conniving oil tycoon became one of television's most iconic roles. The series, known for its dramatic plot twists and complex characters, ran for 14 seasons, and Hagman's performance as J.R. Ewing earned him critical acclaim. The 1980 season finale, in which J.R. Ewing is shot by an unknown assailant, became a cultural phenomenon and led to the creation of the worldwide catchphrase, Who Shot J.R.? Hagman's work on Dallas garnered him two Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series, along with four Golden Globe Award nominations. The early 1980s saw Hagman reprise his role as J.R. Ewing in the Dallas spin-off series, Knott's Landing, further expanding his involvement in the show's universe. He also returned to the role in the Dallas TV movies, The Early Years, J.R. Returns, and War of the Ewings, and later appeared in the TNT remake of Dallas in 2012. Beyond his most famous role, Hagman continued to take on diverse roles throughout his career. He starred in the short-lived series Orleans and made a memorable appearance in the seventh season of Desperate Housewives, demonstrating his ability to adapt to different genres and eras of television. Other projects. Larry Hagman, renowned primarily for his acting career, ventured into various other projects that highlighted his versatility and interests beyond the realm of television. Music. In 1950, early in his career, Hagman ventured into the music industry alongside his mother, Mary Martin, who was an established Broadway star. 
the duo released a single titled Get Out Those Old Records under Columbia Records. This musical endeavor was a collaborative effort, with arrangements handled by Mitch Miller, a prominent figure in the music industry known for his work with popular artists of the time. The single, credited to Mary Martin and her son Larry, was released in Australia as a 78 RPM record, catalogued as DO3409. In 1980, Hagman made another foray into music with the release of a single titled Ballad of the Good Luck Charm. This recording was released during a period when Hagman was at the peak of his fame due to his role as J.R. Ewing on Dallas. The song, reflective of his period of prominence, showcased his continued interest in music and his ability to leverage his television fame to branch out into other forms of entertainment. Advertising Hagman's presence in advertising was equally notable, further illustrating his broad appeal and marketability. In the 1980s, he appeared in a widely recognized advertising campaign for Schlitz Beer, a major American beer brand. His involvement in the Schlitz campaign not only reinforced his status as a prominent public figure, but also demonstrated his ability to influence consumer behavior through commercial endorsements. Later in 2010, Hagman expanded his advertising efforts by becoming a spokesperson for Solar World, a German solar energy company. This role marked a shift from his previous commercial work, reflecting his interest in promoting renewable energy and sustainability. As the world increasingly focused on environmental issues, Hagman's endorsement of Solar World aligned him with a forward thinking and socially responsible cause. These ventures complemented his acting career and contributed to his lasting legacy as a versatile entertainer with a wide-ranging impact on both popular culture and commercial markets. With all this success, it's no surprise that we'd be featuring his ultra-luxurious homes. Apartment in Santa Monica, California Among the many properties he and his wife Maj Axelson owned over the years, their luxury penthouse in Santa Monica stood out as a true testament to their refined taste and love for the coastal lifestyle. Located in the prestigious 101 Ocean Avenue building, the Hagman's penthouse was the epitome of elegance and comfort. This top floor unit spanned a generous 3029 square feet, offering an expansive and well thought out layout that maximized both space and the breathtaking views surrounding it. The condo featured two spacious bedrooms and three luxurious bathrooms, providing ample space for the couple and their guests. One of the most remarkable aspects of the penthouse was its unobstructed 360-degree views of the Santa Monica Bay, stretching from Palos Verdes to Catalina Island. These panoramic vistas were fully visible thanks to the floor-to-ceiling glass windows that enveloped the living spaces, bringing the beauty of the California coastline directly into the home. Whether looking north towards Malibu or gazing out at the endless horizon of the Pacific Ocean, the views from this condo were nothing short of spectacular. The living room, designed to be both inviting and awe-inspiring, was a central feature of the home offering stunning north-facing views toward Malibu. It was a space where the Hagmans could relax and entertain while soaking in the beauty of the natural landscape. The master bedroom was equally impressive, complete with a sitting and dining area that allowed the couple to enjoy intimate meals or quiet moments together while still being surrounded by the incredible scenery. The dining room, adorned with spotlights and vaulted ceilings, provided a formal space for hosting guests and enjoying fine dining experiences. The penthouse also boasted a large balcony, perfect for outdoor relaxation and taking in the fresh ocean air. The condo's amenities extended beyond its private spaces, with a heated pool adding an extra layer of luxury to the property. A semi-private glass elevator, shared with just seven other tenants, added to the exclusivity of the residence, making it a truly private retreat in the heart of Santa Monica. To Monica, the 101 Ocean Avenue building itself was a haven of luxury, offering residents a range of high-end amenities. The community featured a pool, spa, yoga studio, gym, BBQ area, and a top-floor lounge with 180-degree ocean views, 
ensuring that residents had everything they needed to live a life of comfort and leisure. For those who loved the beach, the building provided immediate access to the sand and surf via a back gate and underground tunnel, making it easy to enjoy the best of coastal living. In January 2013, he sold the luxury condo for $5 million. This sale marked the end of an era for the Hagman family, who had enjoyed the beauty and tranquility of this remarkable penthouse for many years. The condo, with its stunning views and luxurious amenities, was not just a home, but a sanctuary where Larry and Madge could escape the pressures of Hollywood and savor the simple pleasures of life by the sea. Mansion in Ojai, Southern California. In the 1980s, Larry Hagman, the iconic actor best known for his role as J.R. Ewing on Dallas, and his wife, Madge Axelson, discovered the tranquil beauty of Ojai, California, during a family camping trip. Nestled about an hour and a half south of Los Angeles and just south of Montecito, Ojai is a picturesque town known for its peaceful atmosphere and stunning natural landscapes. The Hagman family quickly fell in love with the area, captivated by its charm and the serene escape it offered from the hustle and bustle of Hollywood. This newfound affection for Ojai led them to purchase a sprawling 43-acre plot of land high in the mountains, offering breathtaking views of the town below and the surrounding valleys. In 1987, the Hagmans embarked on an ambitious project to create their dream home on this magnificent piece of land. The construction of their estate, which they affectionately nicknamed Paradise, was a labor of love that would take four years to complete. By 1991, the 20,000-square-foot estate stood as a testament to the couple's vision of luxury living, seamlessly blending opulence with eco-consciousness. The estate, a sprawling seven-bedroom, ten-bathroom masterpiece, was designed to offer the ultimate in comfort and luxury while also embracing sustainable living. The property was equipped with on-site solar power and wells, ensuring a self-sufficient and environmentally friendly lifestyle. In addition to its eco-friendly features, the estate boasted fruit and avocado orchards, allowing the Hagmans to enjoy fresh produce right from their land. The centerpiece of the estate was a stunning swimming pool, perfectly positioned to take full advantage of the expansive views of the surrounding mountains and valleys. The nearly 43-acre property was meticulously landscaped to enhance its natural beauty, offering a private and peaceful retreat for the Hagman family. A helipad was included on the property, providing a convenient and stylish way to access the remote location, while the estate's positioning allowed for perfect sunrise and sunset views. The outdoor living spaces were designed to maximize the enjoyment of the stunning surroundings, with ample room for alfresco dining and relaxation. The interior of the estate was no less impressive, featuring a unique layout that divided the living spaces into three separate wings, each designed as a tower. These wings, each containing multiple bedrooms and sitting areas, surrounded a central courtyard that housed the swimming pool, creating a harmonious blend of indoor and outdoor living. The estate also included a breakfast room, a formal dining area, a well-appointed kitchen, and a variety of specialized rooms, such as an art room, gym, family room, games room, and music room. Ground floor bedrooms provided easy access to the outdoors, while a den, library, and office offered spaces for work and quiet reflection. Throughout the estate, luxurious details abounded. Multiple fireplaces added warmth and ambiance, while wide entryways, vaulted ceilings, and large windows allowed natural light to flood the interior spaces, creating a bright and welcoming atmosphere. The estate's design was both grand and inviting, making it the perfect setting for family gatherings, social events, and quiet moments of relaxation. Despite its many charms, the Hagmans eventually decided to part with their beloved Ojai estate. In 2009, Larry listed the property for sale at $11 million, a reflection of its grandeur and the countless memories it held for the family. However, 
the estate did not sell immediately, and it remained on the market for several years. In 2013, the estate was finally sold for more than $6 million, marking the end of an era for the Hagman family. The new owners of the estate were the Church of Scientology, which repurposed the property into a drug rehabilitation facility called Narconon Ojai. While the estate's purpose has changed, the beauty and serenity that drew Larry and Maj Hagman to Ojai remain, continuing to offer a place of healing and peace for those who seek it, abandoned house in Texas. In the late 1970s, Larry Hagman purchased a house in Texas. This property, spanning a modest but comfortable 1994 square feet, featured a spacious living room centered around a welcoming fireplace, four cozy bedrooms, and two well-appointed bathrooms. The house also boasted a full basement, offering ample space for storage or other uses, and was framed by two inviting porches that hinted at the possibility of many peaceful sunny days spent outdoors. Shortly after acquiring the property, Hagman embarked on a series of renovations, perhaps envisioning a home that would perfectly reflect his unique style and tastes. However, for reasons that remain unclear, the renovations came to an abrupt halt. The house, which had held so much promise, was left unfinished, and as the years went by, it slowly slipped into a state of abandonment. The once grand plans for the home faded into the background, and the property remained frozen in time, untouched and unchanged. Hagman's sudden death in 2012 only deepened the mystery surrounding the house. It stands as a silent, unanswered question, a piece of Hagman's life that, like the unfinished renovations, was left incomplete. The house much like its former owner, continues to captivate the imagination, but its story remains untold. Larry Hagman, widely recognized for his iconic roles in television. Offstage, his dedication to various causes and his deep commitment to giving back were evident in the breadth of his charitable work and the impact he made on countless lives. Philanthropy. Hagman was a generous supporter of Dallas-area charities, consistently contributing to organizations that sought to uplift and empower the local community. His commitment to the arts was particularly strong, as demonstrated by his long-standing support for the South Dallas Cultural Center, which has been a hub for artistic expression since its inception, 1986. Hagman's passion for the arts and education extended further when 2012, he founded the Larry Hagman Foundation. This organization was established to promote creative arts education for economically disadvantaged children in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, providing them with opportunities to explore and develop their artistic talents. Under his leadership, the foundation awarded significant grants to various organizations, including $25,000 to the Dallas Children's Theater, known for its engaging performances that inspire young audiences. The foundation also provided $10,000 to Fraser Revitalization, a community development organization, and funded a special program at Dunbar Elementary School. Additionally, the Elaine Thornton and Artists Foundation for the Arts received $5,000 to support their efforts in fostering creativity and artistic excellence. Through these contributions, Hagman's Foundation played a pivotal role in ensuring that children from all backgrounds had access to the transformative power of the arts. Beyond his support for the arts, Hagman was a strong advocate for environmental sustainability and alternative energy. His advocacy for alternative energy was further demonstrated through his support of the Solar Electric Light Foundation. This organization harnesses solar power and wireless communications to tackle pressing global issues such as food and water scarcity, climate change, and poverty. Hagman's involvement with the foundation highlighted his forward-thinking approach to addressing some of the world's most urgent challenges. In addition to his environmental work, Hagman was a fervent advocate for public health. His role as the longtime chairman of the American Cancer Society's annual Great American Smokeout was particularly notable. In this capacity, 
he challenged and encouraged the millions of smokers across the United States to quit smoking, leveraging his celebrity status to promote a healthier lifestyle. Hagman's dedication to this cause was deeply personal, as he himself was a recipient of a life-saving liver transplant in 1995. Following his transplant, Hagman became an outspoken advocate for organ donation, using his platform to raise awareness about the critical need for donors. He served as the honorary chairman of the National Kidney Foundation's American Transplant Games, an event that honors the selfless acts of love by organ donors and celebrates the lives they save. His involvement with the National Kidney Foundation was a testament to his gratitude for the second chance at life he received and his desire to ensure that others could benefit from similar life-saving procedures. His contributions continue to resonate, leaving an enduring impact on the lives of those he touched through his charitable work. Personal Life and Death Beyond his public persona and the fame that accompanied his acting career, Hagman's personal life was marked by deep love, significant challenges. In 1954, Hagman married Mai Axelson, a Swedish-born fashion designer who would become his lifelong partner and the mother of his two children, Heidi and Preston. The couple's union was one of enduring love and commitment, lasting over five decades. However, Life was not without its trials. In 2008, Maj Axelson was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, a devastating condition that slowly erodes memory and cognitive function. Hagman stood by his wife's side throughout her battle with the illness, offering support and care as her condition progressed. Maj Axelson passed away in 2016, eight years after her diagnosis, leaving behind a legacy of love and resilience. Hagman himself faced significant health challenges throughout his life, many of which were consequences of his longtime struggle with alcohol. A heavy drinker for over 40 years, Hagman's lifestyle eventually caught up with him. In the early 1990s, he was diagnosed with cirrhosis, a severe liver condition often caused by excessive alcohol consumption. The situation worsened when Hagman was later diagnosed with liver cancer, a direct result of his years of drinking. In 1995, he underwent a life-saving liver transplant, a procedure that gave him a second chance at life. Despite overcoming this major health crisis, Hagman's battle with illness was far from over. In 2011, he announced that he had been diagnosed with stage 2 nasopharyngeal cancer, a rare form of cancer affecting the upper part of the throat behind the nose. True to his resilient spirit, Hagman successfully treated the cancer, demonstrating once again his determination to overcome the odds. But fate dealt him yet another blow when, in 2012, he was diagnosed with myelity splastic syndrome, a serious blood disorder previously known as pre-leukemia. This diagnosis would prove to be his final battle. On November 23, 2012, Larry Hagman passed away at Medical City Dallas Hospital, succumbing to complications from myelity splastic syndrome. His death marked the end of an era, not just for his family and friends, but for the countless fans who had admired him over the years. Hagman died peacefully, surrounded by loved ones, a fitting end for a man who had brought so much joy and entertainment to the world. At his bedside during his final moments, were some of the closest friends he had made during his illustrious career. Actress Linda Gray, who famously played his on-screen wife, Sue Ellen Ewing, on Dallas, was among those present. In a heartfelt statement following his death, Gray described Hagman as her best friend for 35 years and reflected on the profound impact he had on her life. He was the piper of life, and brought joy to everyone he knew. He was creative, generous, funny, loving, and talented, and I will miss him dearly. He was a unique person and lived life to the fullest, she said, capturing the essence of the man behind the larger-than-life character. Patrick Duffy, another Dallas co-star who played J.R. Ewing's brother Bobby, was also by Hagman's side as he passed. Duffy's grief was palpable as he expressed the deep loss he felt at the passing of his friend.
On Friday, I lost one of the greatest friends who ever graced my life. The loneliness is just hard because Larry's peace and comfort has always been important to me, now as it was when he was here. He was a fighter in the gentlest way, against his own odds and for his friends. I cherish his friendship, Duffy shared, underscoring the deep bond that had developed between the two men over the years. His legacy extends far beyond his memorable roles on television. It lives on in the hearts of those who knew him and in the countless lives he touched through his work, both on and off the screen. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed learning about his life and want to see more content like this, please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Your support means the world to me and helps keep this channel going. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.